Hi, my name is Riley Chase, and if you use Veracrypt for full disk encryption on your Windows 10 computer, um, you might have run into this screen before after doing a Windows update. Um, now, what happened here is after the Windows update completed, instead of being presented with your Veracrypt bootloader so you could type in your encryption password and get logged back into Windows, um, you're presented with this screen which is uh, basically in fit a failed update screen and it, you have some options to try and troubleshoot why the update didn't work but um, there's nothing you can really do so you're gonna click go back to the previous version and then um, if you click that um, what it'll do is it'll roll back that update and um, you'll be able to boot into your PC again but then uh, if you do that you will be stuck in that version of Windows um, until you figure out how to get to the next version. So that's what I'm going to talk about today is how to get to the next version of Windows when you're stuck in this boot loop. So I've rebooted and um, I'm just going to show the version that I'm currently on right now by typing in winver into uh, command there. Um, so you can see I'm on uh, Microsoft Windows version 17.03 and I'm trying to get to version 17.09 which is the fall creators update. Um, and Veracrypt uh, also has full disk encryption um, on the computer and that's what the problem is. So I've searched, I've searched on Google, uh, Veracrypt Windows 10 won't update and there's a couple things that I've already read through here and eventually I landed on this uh, GitHub post right here. Now basically what's happened is there's a full disk encryption. Um, what's happened is that because of the full disk encryption, the, the Windows 10 update was such a big one that um, rather than just doing an update, it's actually an entire new OS that has copied over the settings from your old OS and then you boot into that new OS. Well, the problem is uh, Microsoft did not um, move those Veracrypt drivers from the old OS to the new OS. So one option that you have to fix this is to decrypt your entire hard drive um, and then you could run the updates um, and boot into the new OS and re-encrypt the whole entire hard drive. Now, you know, if, if you have a terabyte hard drive, it, it's a long process. It's a long, it takes a long time to decrypt the whole entire hard drive, re-encrypt it. So I was looking for an easier way. I knew that that was probably what I was going to have to do, but luckily I found this guy. Um, uh, kudos to this guy because he made this awesome script which um, it fixes the problem without you having to decrypt and re-encrypt so um, here's the github page and it has some instructions and um, right off the bat I was a little bit worried like I didn't want to screw it up he says uh, he's not a native English speaker so pardon for spelling mistakes um, but overall it's actually a pretty straightforward easy to use guide um, but I made this video anyways because I thought I could uh, explain it and show it a little better. So before you get started, I'd recommend doing a full backup of the computer just in case something does go wrong. Um, I use uh, Cloudberry software. I definitely recommend it. Um, I went with the server image-based, um, but I can get you discounted pricing because I'm a reseller if you, uh, if you want a better price on that. But basically, $120. Bucks, um, but it gives you the full image base so that um, not only do you not lose any files, but you also, um, if anything goes wrong, you can restore and get all your programs back and save yourself the time of having to reinstall all your programs. So that's important. All right, so you've backed up your computer. Now we're going to get started um, fixing this, this issue with uh, the encryption. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, download that that uh, the latest version of Windows 10 and we're gonna go ahead and um, grab the whole entire image um, by using this media tool program which is linked to in the github here but yeah microsoft.com so um, it says go, uh, click here to update now we don't want to do that we want to download the media installation uh, or the installation media and we're gonna go ahead and run that program all right, then you're presented with the option of upgrade this PC or create installation media. We want to create the installation media. Go ahead and uh, agree to these settings. And we're going to want to create um, an ISO file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and store that on the desktop.
Okay, so as you probably noticed, I skipped through a lot of the slow parts there. It did take about 15 or 20 minutes um, to actually finish completing that download and um, get this ISO file um, out of the download. So now I have it here on the desktop, Windows.ISO, and um, there's this final screen showing here. Do I want to burn it to a DVD? No. Um, click Finish. And uh, it's going to go ahead and clean up real quick. All right, so that's done. So we're going to go ahead and open up this um, this ISO file suit, so double click it, and uh, we're going to extract all this stuff out into a new folder. So I'll just um, create a new folder called New Folder for now, and um, just go ahead and drag and drop this, and I'll be right back when this finishes. All right, so this file is finished transferring. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up that um, new folder that's on the desktop and we're gonna put the script that this guy wrote into the root of that folder so we're gonna hit, go ahead and download the script here um, from the github page it's uh, inside a zip archive so we're gonna go ahead and open that open the folder inside of it and then it has the readme and the license file we don't need to worry about that we just want the script itself so I'll go ahead and move that um, from that zip file into the root um, of this folder here and then we're gonna go ahead and run with administrator rights and it gives you um, a little description of what it does and go ahead and press enter inside that script to continue and it's gonna go and run through all of its steps Hey, just got back. So it looks like um, the script did complete. Uh, a few things to mention real quick, though, is it did take quite a while. But also, when it first started, it said press any key to continue right here. So I pressed enter one time, and um, even though the window was highlighted, and I'm pretty sure and everything, uh, I had to actually press it a few times before it looked like the script was doing something. So I hit enter a few times. Um, walked away, noticed it wasn't doing anything, came back, entered a few more times, and then it started doing stuff. So as you can see, I'm just going to scroll through all the output real quick, and um, I'm not really sure how long this should have taken. Uh, it took a few hours because I walked away from it, um, but uh, this is all the output. So, And in the beginning of the script, it said not to worry if some things fail or something like that, but basically a lot of success messages here um, and 100%. So it looks like it's good. Um, one other thing I was going to mention is that at some point it did get stuck again at like, it said like 13% or something. And so I sat there and stared at it for like an hour and then I came back and it was you know, I selected this and hit enter a few more times and then it started going again. So um, um, basically the lesson learned is just if it looks like it's stuck, hit enter a few times and see if it starts going again. Um, so anyways, that's that. Um, it's all completed and uh, we're going to move on to the next part. So basically what that script did is it patched in those um, that Veracrypt bootloader and the Veracrypt drivers into that Windows 10 update. Now the next step is to check to see if your system has either BIOS or UEFI. And um, if it has BIOS, you can go ahead and um, uh, skip this last step. There's only one more step for UEFI um, computers and uh, they require one more step here. But if you're BIOS, then you can um, go ahead and double click setup.exe which will um, finish the update. and um, so you, if you are BIOS, you'd go into here um, and then double click setup.exe and then this would pop up and you'd say go ahead download and install updates. Now let, first of all we need to check to figure out, um, you might not know if your system is BIOS or UEFI. So um, I just googled real quick how to check if your system is BIOS or UEFI. And I found this neat article right here. Without having to reboot, there is a way to um, find out um, which which uh, boot environment you have. <clears throat> so uh, this article says go ahead and find um, navigate to this path right here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that, put that into here, and open up that this log file. And inside the log file, we can go ahead and search for the words boot environment. And boom, found it right there on this line. And this um, I'm running this in a virtual machine, and it has uh, BIOS. So now I know 
that I don't need to um, perform this last step. But let's go ahead and assume that you you have a UEFI system, and it might just say EFI here. I can't remember. Um, and if that is the case, um, go ahead and follow this next step with me. All right. So if you found out that you do have a UEFI um, system, uh, you're just gonna have to um, copy these files to a USB stick, and then we're gonna boot the computer from that USB stick and uh, just run a couple commands, and then reboot into the actual operating system and run the upgrade. Um, so basically first thing to do get the USB stick plugged in I'm not gonna actually show it here because I'm on a virtual machine and I couldn't get the USB connection working for some reason but basically you will um, copy all these files and just simply drag and drop them to that USB stick um, now there's just one thing to keep in mind with USB if it's formatted and as a fat 32 then that has a max file size of 4 gigabytes and because the install.wim file is 7 gigabytes um, you will have to format that USB stick, reformat it as NTFS, which supports larger file, um, file sizes. So just keep that in mind if you get an error while you're copying the files over. Um, once you've got that done, uh, plug that USB stick in, reboot, and then um, make sure you hit F2 or whatever and uh, make sure you boot from that USB stick and then um, I'll catch you at the next step. So once you've rebooted your computer and you've um, hit F2 or whatever and then selected to boot from that USB stick, the Windows uh, installer will start running. Now you don't want to install it, you don't want to go through with the installation, instead you want to press Shift and F10 um, once it starts up and uh, that will give you some other options and of those options you want to select that you want a command prompt. Now once you open up the command prompt, um, you just need to enter this one command and um, I wasn't able to show this part of the demonstration that's why I have it in notepad because I wasn't able to get that USB thing working with the virtual box but basically once you pull up that command prompt um, let's just say it looks you know like it looks like this or whatever all you gotta do is uh, run this one command and what that's gonna do is place that Veracrypt bootloader into your UF UEFI system so that you can um, have that password prompt for your Veracrypt uh, decryption so once you enter that in um, to the command prompt and then you press enter, um, that's all you have to do. Don't continue with the installation after that. Just shut shut down and then um, go ahead and reboot. But the next time you you reboot, you're gonna boot into uh, so pull the USB stick out so you can boot into your normal operating system. Once you're back in your normal operating system, um, you're gonna you're not gonna go and open this folder anymore, actually, because now you should um, you're gonna actually open the USB stick, which has the same files on it. But make sure you open the USB stick and not the folder on your desktop. So you open the USB stick and then um, you go ahead and run setup.exe. Now I'm gonna run it from this folder because I have a BIOS system, so I didn't need to inject those um, that command. I didn't have to run that command on it to add that bootloader so um, but it will look the same um, so you're gonna go ahead and click download and install updates all right so I've skipped through some of the um, the waiting time on the install and go ahead and hit install now I've gone ahead and logged into Veracrypt after the upgrade caused a reboot. And we have a second reboot here, so I've logged into Veracrypt again. And now we've got a third reboot. So after three reboots, um, I was finally able to get logged into the Fall Creators update. And just to show that it has finished here, um, I'll run that WinVer command again. And now you can see I'm on version 1709 of uh, Windows 10.